something double digit value. In this video, I'm going to explain some of the physics of shooting to you. The numbers I use will be arbitrary, meaning that they are there to illustrate my point and they probably won't be the exact numbers in reality. I will also simplify things to the very basics, so they are as easy to understand as possible. In order for the ball to go through the hoop, it must follow the trajectory that I have drawn. It has to travel at the correct angle and the correct speed. Let's say the speed has to be 2 meters per second from this distance. In order for the ball to leave at this speed and angle, it has to experience a vertical and horizontal force. The vertical force will make the ball rise before gravity pulls it back down. The horizontal one will push it towards the basket. Let's say that these forces are both 10 newtons for the current distance to the basket. This is scenario 1. As you can see, I'm standing completely flat-footed. This means that any force that I generate will come from just my arm. Therefore, my arm must produce 10 newtons of vertical force and 10 newtons of horizontal force for the ball to go through the hoop. This is how people shoot free throws, because you can't jump. However, your arm can only produce so much force. If you try to shoot a 3 without jumping, it can be very difficult to even reach the basket. Go out and try it if you don't believe me. And keep this in mind for later. This is scenario 2. Here, I'm jumping straight upwards when I release the ball. Let's say that I'm jumping up at the speed of 1 meter per second. Now, the amount of force that my arm has to produce has changed. Because the ball is already rising vertically at 1 meter per second along with my whole body, my arm only has to add 5 newtons to the ball vertically instead of 10 newtons. I still have to add 10 newtons of force horizontally to get the ball to reach the basket, but the vertical momentum from my jump has reduced the amount of force that my arm has to produce vertically. This is similar to how Steph Curry shoots. He releases the ball just after he takes off from the ground, giving him lots of vertical force from his jump. This means his arm doesn't have to do as much of the work as other players' arms. This is the number one reason why Steph can shoot the ball from so deep. He really maximizes the force provided from his jump. This is scenario 3. Here I've already jumped up and now I'm falling vertically back to the ground. Let's say I'm falling at 1 meter per second. Because the ball and I are moving downwards, my arm now has to produce more vertical force than before. I still have to produce 10 newtons horizontally, but now I have to produce 15 newtons vertically for the ball to exit my hands at 2 meters per second. This is an illustration of how a player like Derek Rose shoots. He explodes upwards to a high point, but his release takes place as he starts to fall back to the ground. This is why he misses short on three pointers. His explosive jump doesn't actually add any power to his shot. In fact, it takes force away from his shot. Derek is physically stronger than a player like Steph Curry, so how come Steph can shoot easily from five feet further back? This is the answer. This is scenario four. Here, I am at the apex of my jump. The situation in this exact moment is the same as when I had not jumped at all in scenario 1. The only difference is that I am off the ground instead of on it. The ball is not moving up or down, so the equivalent of 0 meters per second. Therefore, my arm has to produce about 10 newtons vertically and 10 newtons horizontally. There will be a slight difference because I am marginally closer to the basket but this difference is negligible, especially from 3 point range. This is a very common release point for players. I wouldn't say it's a negative, but it's definitely not a positive either. You gain an advantage by having a higher release point, but your arm is now producing all the force behind the ball. This is how Russell Westbrook shoots. Even a physically imposing person like Westbrook cannot produce the same amount of force that Steph Curry does, because his jump essentially adds no force to his shot. This is scenario 5. Here, I am also at the apex of my jump. However, this time I also jump forwards instead of just going straight up. I am still moving forwards even though I am at the vertical apex of my jump. Let's say I am moving at a speed of 1 meter per second. Now I only have to produce 5 newtons of horizontal force for the ball to reach the basket. I still have to produce 10 newtons of vertical force because my vertical speed is 0 meters per second. 
Again, I am marginally closer to the basket, so the forces will be very slightly less, but not enough to make a big difference. Lots of my subscribers have been asking about Isaiah Thomas, and this is how he shoots. He jumps really high upwards and also really far forwards. His release comes at the apex of his jump, but unlike Westbrook and Rose, Thomas's jump still adds force to his shot. The difference between him and Curry is that his jump adds more horizontal force than it does vertical force. The final scenario, number 6, involves both a vertical and horizontal jump. Hopefully you can see that because I release the ball as I am moving upwards and forwards, the amount of force that my arm has to produce is even less than in the other ones. Say I'm moving vertically and horizontally at 1 meter per second. Now my arm only has to produce 5 newtons in each direction for the ball to reach the basket. This is how someone like Kyle Korver shoots. He is considered to be a top 10 shooter of all time, so this is a great practice to incorporate into your own shot. Thanks for watching. I hope you understood what I was saying. If not, feel free to drop a comment below and I will respond as quickly as I can. If you haven't already, make sure you like the video and subscribe now for more videos like this in the future.